Did you have a nickname when you were young? Did I? Oh, I had lots of names. They weren't very flattering, I'm afraid. But they called all my life they called me Dangerous Dan McGrew. Because <laughs> I used to be a little bit of a goer. And uh, I think I was thrown out of every pub in West Australia when I was a young man. Uh, and then so I stopped drinking altogether. And I never drank at all for 40 years. Uh, I never had any trouble. And uh, slowly the nickname fell away. In fact, some of my friends still call me Dan. One of them just went out to chat with one leg, Ronnie Ash, he'd still call me Dan because we played football together for a long time. And, uh, yes, uh, many names, and some of them I said not very complimentary. <laughs> They're gone, sorry. Okay, so when were you born? Where or when? when? I was born on the 1st of June, big holiday for me, remember, Foundation Day in 1925. Where did you go to school when you were young? At a little place called Galena, an ex-mining town, where the Murchison River and the Great Northern Highway cross. On the Murchison River Bridge, right alongside there is where I was bred. Not born, because I was born in Geraldton. And I went up there and I spent my young life there from the time I was two. And I went to the Galena State School when I was four, because you had to have <coughs> seven children at school to keep the school going, otherwise the government closed it up. So I had to go to school early, and naturally I became very bright at a young age, a bit of a show-off and a know-all, as you'd think. Uh, and I left school when I was 13 to become a shearer's cook. Uh, go on. Keep going. And, and I found out that uh, shearers cooks are very well thought of, but unfortunately the places where I was tied up with, they only had short seasons, three or four weeks at a time, so you were never really permanently employed. And uh, it was a good thing to get out of. And at this time there was a uh, situation called the Depression and work was hard to come by, money was even harder, but food was hard to come by. And many, many days I can remember when all we had to eat was bread and dripping. And that's what we lived on. So how did you get to school? How did I get to school? On Shanks's pony. I didn't live far from the school. Uh, half a mile, I suppose, half a mile at the most. Yeah. Wouldn't be any more than that in here. And, and the school stood <coughs> for quite a few years after I left there and it became a popular place for the main roads board to work from when they were working on the road there and somebody left the fire going in it one night and because it was where the board they burnt it down. So it's a good building, just burnt down to carelessness and there's now only memories. So did you or any of your friends get in trouble at school? Did I? Well, I was the only one, being as our, just show off with you. <laughs> I, I'm the only one who could say this. I had the cane, the teacher broke his cane on me. <laughs> I used to get a, a prize every year for being the smartest kid at the school. As you can imagine, if you start school early, you naturally get a little bit in front of the others all the time. And so I had a bit of a leg in. And when I was uh, 11, I had to go into correspondence because we'd finished, couldn't be taught anymore then. And we used to have to teach the junior classes to help the teachers out. And uh, go on. Um, did you have any chores? At school? Yeah. Well, that, as I said, we had to help the teacher, uh, teach the young ones. And uh, other than that, no, we were given a, a pretty free reign. If we felt like sweeping the place out, we swept it, which wasn't very often. Because, you know, you're sort of children not very keen on uh, keeping places tidy. But we... We were very meticulous about 
our artwork and our woodwork and things like that. There was nothing untidy or extravagance about them. As for chores, I had chores, that many chores at home to do. I never got time to worry about them at school. It was gone. So what did you do at home? At home? Well, we had cattle and we had goats and most of the time it was my responsibility to, t to go and pick the cattle up. It was a, where the Galena School is, is a four square miles of reserve where the cattle used to graze and it used to be my job to go and find the cattle every afternoon after school and bring them home and take the calves off them and pen the calves up where they couldn't get to the mothers overnight so that they'd be locked up for the night. And in the morning it was my job to go and find the cattle again and bring them home to milk them. And to pull the water out of the well, or a mine it was, pull the water out of there to give the cattle their drink for the day. And sometimes there used to be 50 or 60 head of cattle waiting for a drink. And poor little Gordon used to have to wind the windlass up and pull it up. One day, you know, I'll laugh at this, one day I was pulling it fast and, and the bucket used to come very, very smoothly till it came out of the water and then it got heavy. And just as it got heavy, it hooked up on a piece of timber and the handle slipped out and it hit me on top of the head and knocked me head over the kettle and I've been a bit funny ever since. <laughs> Can you tell us about a memorable event in your life? Yes, I could tell you a story. You might find it hard to understand, but I suppose I used to be a pilot, you know, during the war, a bomber pilot. But even I came into Geraldton once with a engine on fire and a load of bombs. And uh, for my efforts in bringing the plane home and landing it, they put me on a court martial for endangering the king's property, which is very, very hard to take for a young man. I was only 19. And I went from there over, I was shifted from there, I went over to East Sale, and I hit the deck low flying over there, showing off primarily. And I had to force land at Gifford, and when I landed the aeroplane, it meant that landed the full length of the runway and I had to fly the brakes all the way down to the finish to stop it running off the runway. It, that's how smoothly it landed because the wheels just show a little bit underneath the body of the plane. So for my efforts there, I couldn't do much about it because the uh, trainee air gunners that I was flying, they got out of control and were shooting where they shouldn't have been. I looked around like that and that's how I come to hit the ground. But So we had to all shut up or else we'd all been kicked out. But that was not bad. The worst experience I had, one that you, you don't want to think too long about, I went up back to this place called Galena where I was virtually bred up, bred, and a man called Les Matthews from Jordan was working from there with scrapers doing the main road and he said I want you to come and help me turn the pins in the scraper chains. So I went up he said you uh, do this and you do that and you get your son to hold the torch and he'll give it to you and you heat them up and you wail them with a gimpy hammer and then you turn them and give it back to him and, and I was doing this and a new driver that he took up jumped on the seat of the machine and I was standing inside the scraper chains, big chains that go around like that, and he jumped in and turned the key on, and it started up. And there I was dancing in this great rock scraper chain going around, and my head was just, just about going underneath each time, and my feet, if I'd have missed one, they're only that wide, if I'd have missed one, both legs would have got cut off at the bottom. And I had to dance like that. Les Matthews run about 25 yards and turned the key off. And even now, I have nightmares thinking about that. Oh, that's pretty it, amazing. It, it was. I said, uh, poor old Les Matthews, the boss, he said he had nightmares about it for a long while too. Yes, now go and ask them something sensible. 
that I don't have to show off about. <laughs> Can you um, tell us something that you think has changed over time, like sports or jobs? That I've changed? Or that have changed? That have changed. Yes, I can tell you what has changed. I'm very cynical, as you can imagine by now, uh, and very critical. Uh, I played centre-half back for 15 years as football. It's a very important position to play. And uh, we used to play, for the first half of my career, we played on gravel. And you didn't have any time off. You went onto the ground to start with, and you played for the four quarters, and then you went off the ground. And sometimes if that other team was short, you played in the other team and you did another four quarters straight off. Not run on the ground and run off and get your photo taken and someone gets a goal and they run around kissing each other and going on. And, and we think of when we see the, the game of football today, of a game of pansies, it's nothing like it used to be when I played. So did you ever fall over on the gravel? Did I? I? If I could show you cuts on my knee that are there to this day, like 50, 50 years later, 45 years later in here. Yes, it's very, very unpleasant. Okay, um, can you tell us about any other jobs you've done? Well, I've told you that I was a pilot during the Air Force, and I've told you that I was a miner. And what I didn't say was that I had a reputation for being a great bulldozer and great driver on the roads. I worked on the main roads for quite some time. And uh, I didn't think I'd ever leave it. But I had a fight with a mob one day and I had to leave because they made it that way that I wasn't very popular there anymore. And uh, that, that was a job that I liked on, on driving bulldozers. Okay, have you got any other stories you'd like to tell us? Oh, lots of stories I, I don't like to talk about. As I said, they <coughs> make my hair stand up sometimes. But uh, no, I wouldn't like to tell you. Oh, well, I could tell you one. I was coming from Port... Uh, coming from Onslow. Uh, when I worked on the main road, we worked from the Galena Bridge, I was telling you where I was brought up, through to Onslow. And that's where I did all my bulldozer and greater driving. And we were coming from there, and a, a big, what they used to call it, an Arm and Harrington truck. It was a straight out of the Arm they used to cart General Grant tanks on the back of them. And I left Onslow, and the corrugation was that bad that it shook the batteries out and it short circuited, and the whole thing caught fire. So it put it out and we had to keep the engine running all the time because we couldn't start it any other way. And there's only two wheel tracks for a road and we had, it was going to take two days to drive from there to here. So me and the chap that was driving, or the chap that was driving and I, I should say, for your benefit, uh, and we, and we came along the road and we drove all the way till just the other side of the Murchison River and we still hadn't stopped the bus. And I was driving, we used to change over while we were going along. And I was driving, and he was the recognised truck driver. And a pool of water loomed up in front of us, and without thinking, I shoved the brakes on and stalled the bus. There in the middle of the road in this pool of water. And there we were, 28 miles north of Galena, with no way of starting, and no way of getting anywhere except walking. So we stayed there for a day and a night and a little jeep come along the road and he said, we'll have a go at pulling you. And we said, they're going to have no chance of pulling this great machine. Anyhow, he hooked on and with the four of us pushing, we got the thing to move enough to turn one revolution to the engine and it started up. And we drove on down to here just in time for me to go onto the footy ground to play in the finals. <laughs> Can you tell us anything that's significant to Northampton? Any special events? Any special events? Well, I should imagine one of the special events of Northampton is going from sheep going back to cattle. It, was, it started off with the cattle, then it went through the sheep era, 
and became famous for <coughs> one of the best or richest stud breeding places in the state. And now they've gone back to cattle again. So I think that is primarily because of the uh, the uh, ability for, for the biggest stock to be able to contend with extreme conditions like flies and not enough rain and well, shortage of tucker. You're not supposed to say tucker, are you? Shortage of food. Um, so what advice would you like to give to young people today? I'll tell you what advice I'd give them. You cannot work too hard. Hard work is the best medicine there is. Uh, the harder you work, the longer you'll live and the healthier you will stay. The more you sit down and watch television and the less you get off the, out of sports, the more prone you will be to picking up what should we say, every germ that goes around and your ability to fight them off is restricted and you find yourself having rather an unsavoury approach to general living. Hard work is the, it's the backbone of a lot of it. And uh, don't think that hard work killed anyone. A lot of people die through not enough work, but I don't know if anyone ever died through hard work. Okay, well, we'd like to thank you for letting us interview you today. Mm. It's been fantastic.